Good day, friends. Um, for the first time in a long while, uh, a Word of God movie review. I've got a series of movie reviews uh, when uh, the films purport to deal with the afterlife, whether through uh, fantasy or out-of-body experience or near-death experience or channeling. And... Um, Perhaps you'll remember a movie from the 1990 called Flatliners, where medical students um, tried to use the available technology to stop their hearts and exit their bodies and have interesting out-of-body experiences. Um, Kiefer Sutherland, Kiefer Sutherland uh, Julia Roberts, Kevin Bacon, all up-and-coming stars of the day. And my recall of that is going to my local uh, uh, shopping mall cinema and not being able to get in because there were so many young people lined up to see it. Uh, it might have been a Tuesday night when it was a half price. Um, and I was, uh, you know, being almost 40, I really stood out. It was a real, uh, you know, 20, 20 to 25 year old uh, kind of movie. Um, this not a sequel, this remake of Flatliners um, aroused my interest because some of it, well, all of it was filmed in the Toronto area where I live and there was uh, some local uh, flurry of excitement because our recently decommissioned old hospital in the town of Oakville because they built a brand spanking new one a couple of miles away, was uh, going to be used for some of the filming. Now, I didn't see anything in the credits saying that it was. There was credits for uh, Kingston, Cambridge, and Hamilton, all towns not far from here, but nothing for Oakville. But some of the decrepit old scenes and uh, sort of basements and whatnot looked like they might have been filmed there. Anyway, not sure. Um... Surprised to see uh, Grandchester uh, Anglican minister detective James Norton in this film. He seemed to me to be much older, but uh, and uh, not really uh, part of the uh, the the age group demographic for this film, but. Um, uh, he seemed to work quite well in terms of acting and appearance. Um, and this remake, while uh, spending more money on uh, special effects and updating the medical technology stuff a little bit, and I'm certainly no one to uh, critique that, um, but it's all sort of based on the recent, well, not recent, last 30, 40 years um, in... Uh, modern hospital situations, they are able to resuscitate heart attack and stroke victims. Um, and that has led to uh, many reports of uh, near-death experience, out-of-body experiences. And um, in the 90s, when I was either getting ready to or had, was doing my own first uh, afterlife exploration book, Eternal Life and How to Enjoy It, um, these NDE books, some of which were, you know, based on medical resuscitation of uh, quote-unquote dead people, um, were all the rage. And um, I think that led to the first Flatliners. The second one, I think they're just um, the director um, and the scriptwriter were just interested in updating it for a new generation. And it doesn't seem to have done that well in the theatres, although that may uh, be, re you know, reversed with uh, DVD sales. Um, but the basic idea has been repeated. There's not much variation. And although there is some interesting and, um, you know, visually appealing representations of out-of-body experience for the five medical students that go through the experience, you know, secretly on their own without telling anyone because it's basically illegal. You can't do it. And you can do it, but you can't get away with it. If you get caught, you're definitely in trouble. So don't try it at home. 
although I, I would advise you to uh, pay attention to any of your lucid dreams or out-of-body experiences, however short and um, evanescent they may seem. And uh, I wish the uh, people writing this movie and directing this movie had taken some <laughs> uh, advice from uh, people, folks like me and many others, Jurgen Zhu and many others, um, who um, have had these experiences and can give much more detailed reports than you're ever going to get out of this movie. Um, this might appeal to uh, the millennial crowd that want to be, uh, uh, you know, sort of scared in the normal uh, horror thriller genre fashion, because many of the special effects and the notion of uh, um, lower astral spirits seeking vengeance for some perceived uh, sin or uh, misdeed is pursued to the full in this film. I see many uh, special effects that reminded me of uh, little snippets of horror movies that I've come across in trailers for, for other films. But um, aside from a few interesting uh, visual effects, um, these uh, medical students don't find out much about the afterlife, even though the movie is sold on that theme. And in the DVD extras, they all talk about exploring the afterlife. Basically, all the explorer, two or three of them explore out of bodies in their neighborhoods or in their cities, which in this case is Toronto. Some, I take it, some helicopter shots of Toronto at night. And certainly those are accurate. You can... Uh, fly about your neighborhood, fly about uh, your city at night or during the day and have a thrilling experience. Um, and technically anything out of body is the astral plane. And the, the, the astral plane of the earth, the first level of it is, you know, you're exploring it as a ghost. And, uh, but the real afterlife is beyond that, where the uh, the dead people actually live and uh, live and move and have their being, as they say, most of them having lots of fun and pleasure and uh, almost all of them not uh, vengeful, angry, lower astral spirits, the kind that are uh, represented in a couple of spots in this film. But basically they're using this setup to just basically repeat the, the scary motifs uh, done in many other um, horror thriller movies. There's not much new here, and I'm very, really very disappointed, especially an actor of uh, James Norton's ability to uh, sign on for uh, such a second-rate sort of production. I'm really disappointed in you, James. You can, you can do better than this. You have done better, and you will do better. Um, Grandchester is... Um, in, what am I, third, uh, third series, third season, all interesting uh, explorations of uh, spiritual uh, issues that we all uh, confront, although framed in a, you know, uh, a context of uh, murders resolved and unresolved and uh, family dramas that lead to that. But that, that's a, a small criticism <laughs> from a Grandchester fan. Um, so basically, um, all the other movies that I have reviewed, uh, afterlife leaning movies, out of body movies, they're all better than this one. This is easily the weakest, although certainly strong in production values. But if you've got nothing to say and nothing to add, why bother? That's what I would say to this, uh, this director and the script writer. You have added nothing. Really disappointing in terms of afterlife knowledge that you could communicate to the public at large, the movie-going public at large. Last year's film's A Ghost Story, which was mentioned as, uh, as an Oscar contender, and um, the French film by Olivier Assayas, um, Personal Shopper. Both of those films will give you much more uh, insight and understanding to um, communicating with those in the afterlife and um, exploring it in out-of-body states. Now, if Ghost Story is about a dead person um, exploring uh, various astral levels, 
uh, and uh, going backwards and forwards through time. And it will tell you much, much more than this film. So um, let's do away with these lower astral spirits seeking vengeance. Most of them don't. Most, most spirits are very happy to be in the afterlife. There are a, a few confused and angry spirits wandering around as ghosts. They're more confused than they are focused enough to be vengeful, I can tell you that. Some are, but they don't really have the, uh, the techniques to manifest knives and try to stab you or push you down a set of stairs or whatever. They just don't have it together enough to do that sort of thing. They can try, and some of them get close, but they never really pull it off, although these movies would have you believe that they do. So, another, uh, as I say, it's, if they hadn't tried to sell it as an afterlife movie, as glimpses into the afterlife, either on the production or in the uh, DVD interviews, I wouldn't be so critical, but they do, they do keep talking about it. And really, there is virtually no insight into the afterlife in this film. Although you may find the thrills and spills of the uh, visual effects of the you know, horror thriller genre style to be exciting, um, it's not going to tell you much. <laughs> Sorry! As I say, a ghost story and personal shopper will tell you much more. Try to track those down. Personal Shopper being a French movie is a little harder, but he's quite well established as a director, and it's not impossible to find. And I've seen a, a ghost story all over the place, so that's not hard to find at all. Anyway, um, another life, afterlife movie review from Word of Gord, and um, maybe something more interesting will come up uh, in the near future. Let's hope so, because Flatliners, the sequel, or the remake, is well worth avoiding. Don't, don't waste your time or money on this. Really, no. <laughs>